This right here is the Antec P82 Flow. It's a 60 to $70 case and about the same price in pounds in the UK. It comes with a tempered glass side panel, solid build quality and has four 140mm fans included right out of the box. Let's throw some hardware in this thing and see just how well it performs. What's up guys, my name is Carl and welcome back to Tech Hunter. I make videos about PC hardware and tech, so if you're new around here, consider hitting that subscribe button down below and let's get back to the video. The Antec P82 Flow is the evolution of the Antec P8. The muted colors and design really are kind of a winner in my opinion. It does remind me a lot of a Fantex P300, but I'm sure that wasn't intentional at all Antec. Similar look to side though, I really dig it. It's definitely aimed at a more mature audience. Somebody who wants their PC to blend into their home office as opposed to being the centerpiece. Now, who would do that? The white power LED is subtle and something I didn't notice immediately. They've blended it in nicely at the top of the case. Up the top, there is a huge magnetic dust filter as well as there being one behind that front panel as well, which is a bit odd and probably completely unnecessary. There's also one at the bottom of the case too for the power supply intake, so no dust there as well. Though that one isn't magnetic and slides in from the back. The front IO is technically the left-hand side IO on the P82. It has a power button and reset switch, two USB 3.0 ports, your HD audio jacks, but no USB-C to add here, unfortunately. The tempered glass is also mounted on the left-hand side with just two thumb screws at the rear as it slots in and slides towards the front of the case. Basically, it's exactly the same as how you mount, near enough, most rear panels on standard cases. By ditching cheaper and traditional thumbscrew mounting, it really makes the P82 look so much more kind of premium in some ways and so much just cleaner. And that completely kind of uninterrupted side panel looks seriously smooth in my opinion. And all that is kind of great because the more I look at it turned off, just sitting there stealthy and idle, the more I like it. The issues start when I turn the thing on though. As far as physical dimensions are concerned, the P82 measures in at a depth of 454 millimeters, 215 millimeters in width and 480 mil in height. Max GPU length is 380 mil, max CPU cooler height is 178 mil, and max PSU length is 220 mil. As far as fan and radiator support is concerned, you can fit up to three more 120 mil fans at the top of the case to complement the 140 mil at the rear and the other three 140 mil fans at the front of the case. You can fit a 360 mil rad at the front if you wanted to, but only a 240 mil rad at the top according to Antic and up to a 140 mil rad at the rear of the case. As far as the building experience was concerned, it was actually a dream for me because of the hardware I chose. I removed the hard drive cage at the bottom with just one thumb screw and just kind of slid it out. Opted against any SATA drives at all because I'm lazy. Though it will definitely prove more difficult if you do go down that route and make use of this thing. If you do go down the option of installing a hard drive for your games down here or even a SATA drive as well, it will add a bunch of more cable mess. SATA power and data cables as well as limiting the amount of space you have to physically fit any spare cables down there. If you want an easy life, like me, uh, you will definitely want a modular power supply that has flat black cables. Well, they don't have to be black, it's just flat. If you use the thicker kind or cable extensions or any kind of custom cabling, things can get real bad real quick. The space behind the motherboard is only about 10 mil. And to the side where you can have, have a lot more space, that's only about 17 mil. So again, not much. If only you don't take Antex advice to mount SSDs there as well, then yeah, that's where you're gonna put most of your cables. Throughout the case, the cutouts aren't in the best places for those nice sweeping bends where we like to see custom cables you kind of just bend them around nicely. And you can make your life hell if you were to go down that route at all. Genuinely though, I didn't have to use a single cable tie around the back. I put two on the cables going to the GPU around the front because there's no decent cutout anywhere. I probably should have put some cable ties around the back because no doubt it would probably bother some people on the internet, but I don't care, I'm lazy. Quite often I spend too much time making my cable management look great for these kind of case reviews, 
only to then cut them all up and throw those cable ties away once the video is done. I'm just trying to be less wasteful, so just not being lazy. Cable routing was straightforward. There's a decent amount of cutouts, more or less in the right place. And overall, nothing was kind of awkward to get to. Cable tie down points are limited around the back. The only thing that kind of did bother me is the fact that Antec still used those stupid expansion slots that you have to kind of bend and lever and bend backwards and forwards and snap out. Not really cool to see that on a case at this price, especially when they include three spares in the box. Why not just have them all installed? If any of you follow me on Instagram, you probably already know what my big problem is with this case. It's the fans that Antec included. They're DC fans. They're regular kind of three pin fans that you can hook up to your motherboard or make use of the Molex adapter that they included in the box. If Antec wants to be competing with other brands, they need to be including four PWM fans with this thing. Most people who will buy this case will make use of that included Molex adapter and they'll be running all of their four fans at full speed 100% of the time. People shouldn't have to suffer that noise constantly. I mean, you can get cases with three or four ARGB PWM fans at this price. I genuinely did assume that these fans would be PWM before I took that rear panel off to find out that they're not. My Fractal Design R5 case has three or four fans in it, all 140 mil. I believe they're all DC as well, but they're connected to a fan hub inside the case which you can then just adjust the speed via a little switch on the front of the case. And that case is five years old and it's on right now. But even on max speed, those fans get nowhere near as loud as the P82 flow does. Probably because those Antec fans though are pushing through a ton of air compared to my Fractal fans. Like seriously, they're pretty good for that. But they absolutely need to be with a front panel like that that only has gaps around the side and the top and the bottom, kind of to withdraw air. I know mesh probably doesn't look as good or as clean as kind of a glass or kind of brushed flat plastic panel, but I mean, we could have had quieter fans that way. If you're one of those people who only ever uses a headset whilst using your PC, it might not bother you, but I'm not one of those people and it does bother me. So much so that I've not even turned the PC on for this video, clearly. As far as noise is concerned, I whipped out the sound meter and placed it around 30 centimeters ish away from the case. With the PC off, my ambient noise level was about 34 decibels. Flick it on and the sound meter ramps up to 46 decibels. In comparison, my Fractal R5 is at 38 decibels with that kind of little front door open. Yeah. For me, that is a deal breaker, unfortunately. Or you just buy four of your own 140mm PWM fans to replace them all like cheap basic ones for maybe $25. But then that bumps up the price quite a bit if that is your preferred method. And you can get cases with mesh, with ARGB fans, which you could just turn off those LEDs if you're that way inclined, that are much quieter while still looking premium. As far as temperatures are concerned though, don't expect a big difference between the front panel being attached and being unattached. I ran Cinebench R20 on loop to see just how hot the CPU would get. Testing hardware is listed on the screen right now if you're interested in what's going inside that system. With the front panel on, we hit 76 degrees Celsius max. When we removed it though, we hit 75 degrees. Quite a big difference. Wait, there's only one degree out? The GPU on the other hand, with the power limit raised to its maximum in MSI Afterburner, and I locked the fan speed at 90%, 100% sounded annoying, so I didn't. I was curious to see how the RTX 2070 would perform. So I loaded up MSI Combustor and started a 1440p stress test to target the GPU primarily, kind of leave the CPU unattached. Again, with the front panel attached, we hit 67 degrees in the GPU. Removing it, we dropped to 62 degrees, which is quite a acceptable difference in my eyes considering what it looks like to be honest. So then I thought I would try hitting both the GPU and CPU at the same time using MSI Combustor. 100% load on both, cooking time. CPU burner and a 1440p benchmark at the same time. After 10 minutes of that with the front pedal removed, we hit around 78 degrees on the CPU and 70 degrees on the GPU. Pretty good to be honest. So then I whacked the panel back on to watch those temperatures start rising under an over the top stress test, maxing out both CPU and GPU to 100% at the same time, we hit 83 degrees on the CPU, up by five degrees. Not a lot really. And the GPU was up by four degrees too, to 74C. These temperatures probably won't bother you and the noise might not bother you. But for me, 
It just doesn't make sense. I mentioned earlier about having something, you know, that can just kind of blend in. Something that's kind of sleek and subtle in the world of RGB everything. When this thing is turned on though, it doesn't blend in at all. It's like you've got a vacuum cleaner sat next to your desk. It, I'll admit it's not that loud, but you get the point. Antec have missed the mark majorly with this one. I get it maybe focused on airflow. Well, you don't put a front panel like that if that's your idea of airflow. I really do like the build quality though. I like the styling. Though let's not forget cable management is pretty much poor. If you overpopulate this thing and make use of any SATA storage drives, or if you fail to use a power supply with flat cables and or one that isn't modular, you're gonna be pulling your hair out, trying to get everything just to fit. But it suffers from both bad thermals and bad acoustics, or at least the woefully bad acoustics make up for the poor thermal design. And if you did decide to replace these fans with something PWM that you can run at a much quieter sound profile, well, that's where your thermals will definitely start to increase as there just isn't much room for air to get into the case. So at the end of the day, they need to be running at near enough maximum speed to try and get some air through that front panel. Let's not forget though, these are 140 mil fans. They're big boys, they move air. But at $70 with many flaws, I'll struggle to recommend this one. Maybe this PC would fit in perfectly in a server room or even used as a server build would probably be a good idea. Ideally that makes use of only M.2 storage because you would better fit any drives in easily. Just rip off that front panel, leave that dust filter on there as well, and you'll be having a great time as a M.2 server build. With the Antec P82 flow sat right there, no fans running, no drives went in that thing to make my life any more difficult than it needed, than it needed to be. No wasted cable ties. I think it's great. I genuinely do. But as soon as I push that power button and those fans start up, I just want to throw that thing out the window. Anyway, guys, that brings us to the end of the video. If you liked it, feel free to click that like button down below. And if you decide my face hasn't offended you, don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit that bell icon as well so you can check out when my next video goes live. Cheers.